Good morning, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. New memory card, who dis? Actually, um, in complete seriousness, if you're watching this, then everything worked out, but I did format the card the moment I put it into the camera, and just because life is what it is, I just really hope that it works fine, and I'm not gonna lose all this footage or otherwise not be able to extract it from the card to edit it. Anyways, um, today is Thursday and tonight is my long-awaited sleep study. So um, priorities for the day. We do have two therapy scheduled, which is our regular for Thursday, but also I need to pack for tonight because I need to bring pajamas. I need to bring clothes for tomorrow to leave the hospital in so I don't leave in pajamas. Um, I also want to make sure to leave a garbage bag on the porch so that when I get home, I can throw all of the stuff that was at the hospital with me in there. And that way I can take it straight to the laundry. But like first I'm gonna go straight to the shower. It's a whole thing. I do this every time I leave the house, by the way, but especially if I'm gonna go to a medical setting, which if I've left the house in the last year, it's probably to go to a medical setting. I also want to like fill my son's humidifier and put his pajamas out and things like that because daddy is handling bedtime completely by himself tonight. And usually I do about 97% of the work and daddy just kind of pops in to say goodnight. Um, so this is going to be a really big departure for all involved. I've already started telling my son like, hey, just so you know, tonight it's just gonna be you and daddy. Mommy's not gonna be here for bedtime, but I'll be back in the morning before you wake up. I don't know how much of it he's receiving, but I want to just intermittently throughout the day kind of give him these reminders so that hopefully it's not a shock at, uh, come bedtime. I'm going to be a mess. I hate being away from my son. I hate being away from my environment. Um, this is gonna suck. Like, I'm really not looking forward to this. I just really want like, can it please be 24 hours from now so that this is over? So yeah, lots going on today. Um, I feel like I'm gonna be able to get it all done though. And so I'm not like overwhelmed. I feel like I made it a point to really plan out my day in super detail so that I know that I'm not gonna forget anything, I know I'm not gonna miss anything, and I'm going to leave everything as prepared and as, you know, stable, I guess, for my son as possible, for my husband while we're at it, because um, I'm sure that this is gonna be a departure for him as well. But um, yeah, it just is what it is. I really just want today to be done. I really just want it to be 24 hours from now, like I said, so. Yeah, one of the other things I wanna make sure to do is to edit the last episode, I guess, at this point, um, because it should be going up tomorrow while I'm returning from the hospital and whatnot. So um, I wanna make sure that that gets out and that I don't have to like feel rushed tomorrow to do anything to get it out for you guys. So yeah, busy day, but um, thank you. Thank you, truck. Yep get your muffler fixed. Um, yeah, <laughs> busy day, but I feel like it's going to, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Happy Thursday. A tomato plant can only be described as surly at this point because it's just taking over everything in such a way that it just looks angry. Meanwhile, you've got these little guys down here that just will not grow because they're not getting any sun or light, I should say, it's not actual sun, but you know what I mean. Thanks to this behemoth of a tomato. The pot that I need to finally transplant this plant is arriving tomorrow, so that should be exciting. But look what I discovered last night and I wanted to show you guys. It's already got flowers, which means fruit will be coming soon. We'll actually have tomatoes pretty soon. And that is super duper exciting. Here's the ones that I actually discovered last night. There's so many of them and they're so big. And that's where the tomatoes come from. They actually grow from that little bud that you see there. So that's crazy. Um, yeah, I wanted to show you guys not only because the growth of this plant is super impressive, the trellis ends down here and it said, haha, trellis what? I don't need you. I will just 
take over everything on my own accord um but yeah like i said i wanted to show you guys the super impressive growth but also kind of wanted to give you guys a chance to remember her this way because once i transplant her into soil remember that this has been growing exclusively in water since it was a seed um the plant might be shocked and die that's a possibility that we must always handle or deal with whenever we transplant anything. So look at her in all her glory and remember her as she once was because um, there's a chance that this is as nice as she's ever going to get and she might croak after I put her in dirt tomorrow. Ah, Gorgeous though, absolutely gorgeous. And then look at the pepper back there. That's the one thriving pepper plant. You can see that the leaves look different. Um, that one's actually as tall as the lamp as well. So this one's just said, forget you lamp and gone over it. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm so impressed at how well things have done in this new arrow garden. I don't know why it's so much nicer <laughs> than the old one, but um, yeah, the growth and the health of the plants is undeniable. Good Friday morning, friends. Uh, I'm back home, as you can see. Last night was not fun. Um, it was not as terrible as I imagined, but amongst the highlights, I was put in a waiting room with way too many people where at least one gentleman behind me was coughing and at least one unidentified person farted really, really loudly while we were all waiting in there. And we all did the polite thing and pretended not to notice, but it was loud. So they hooked me up to all of the things. They told me that I could not sleep on my side, which I am a side sleeper um, because they get the best readings when you're on your back. I always eventually end up on my back, but I need to fall asleep on my side. So it took me about two hours to fall asleep. Um, no exaggeration. And at least one point in the night, they spoke to me through a speaker and said, Desiree, we need you to turn to your back. So that was great. I woke up several times. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just it. Is that the part, the point of the sleep study is let's see what we have to do in order to make you comfortable. So they start at settings that you're not used to and that you are quite uncomfortable at so that they can rule out, okay, these settings, definitely not okay. Um, which is why I took today off so that I could sleep. Um, as soon as I got home, dumped all my clothes, took a shower so I could get all the goop out of my hair, which I'm not entirely convinced I got it all out, but I did my best. Um, went back into bed, <laughs> turned off my alarm so that I could sleep, and at 9 o'clock my son ran into the room, gave me a big hug, and I thought, oh honey, I missed you too, but I'm gonna keep sleeping. Nope. <laughs> he kicked me for about 20 minutes, not mean, like he's not like, ah, like he wasn't like kicking me like to be a jerk, but he was just like, mom, I'm so excited you're here. Listen, let me tell you all the things that happened last night, and da -da -da -da. and yeah, after about 20 minutes of that, I gave up and I just woke up. So I'm tired, but whatever. I'm just happy to be home. I'm happy that I am done with this. They made me sign all sorts of things last night and one of them was like a promise that I wasn't bringing any weapons or explosives into the building. And I kind of wish that I wasn't a sort of person that read things when I read them. I kind of wish I could just like sign things and be done with it, but I read most things try to read most things when I sign them. And seeing that just made me think, 
Well, I didn't bring any explosives, but did anybody else? Like, that hadn't even occurred to me until just now. Yeah, like I keep saying, I'm just happy it's over with. So I should take the day to rest, but of course I've already scheduled a bunch of uh, stuff, you know, for me to do today because I don't want to waste the day, you know? And so let's see, let's see what, uh, what we all get into, right? Happy Friday. Okay, my mind is blown. It's 12.36 right now in the afternoon. I just finished the sleep study a little over six hours ago. I already got an email with my entire um, report, analysis, whatever, complete. So I have my results already from my test that I did less than half a day ago at this point. Um, so the Cliff's Notes version, so I don't bore you with three pages of medical stuff. Apparently it took me over two hours to fall asleep. And for every 12 minutes I slept, I was awake for 30 minutes. So yeah, no wonder I'm waking up exhausted every morning. Um, which by the way, they did note that, well, was it the, the exact wording? The sleep efficiency is lower than expected for a night in the sleep laboratory because they expect that since I'm there by myself, like for example, I don't have my husband snoring going on. I don't have the, um, the having to listen out for my son through the baby monitor and so on. So they expect that my sleep is gonna be at least as good, if not better than the typical night of sleep but instead it's worse than they're used to seeing. So um, yeah, so that's saying something. I also woke up over 230 times in six hours, but zero of those times were respiratory related, which was the whole thing. Like does lack of oxygen while I sleep keep me awake? So out of 230 times that I woke up, zero of those were respiratory related. One was a spontaneous leg movement <laughs> that was so violent that it woke me, which I apparently jerked my legs like that 21 times total throughout the night. But of those 21 times, one of them was, whoa, like enough for my whole body to go, wait, what the heck was that? And wake me up. So all that being said though, even though the 229 other times I woke up were spontaneous. That's the word that they used in the report. They did notice that once the sleep air machine, whatever, was at a certain level, that those um, events either slowed down considerably or stopped. So even though lack of breathing didn't stop me sleeping, they're still gonna go ahead and diagnose me with sleep apnea and give me a new machine, which I think I mentioned ages ago when this thing first came up. Um, that's the same thing that happened last, or not exactly the same thing. I didn't have such a detailed report last time, but last time the, the technician that did my sleep study five or six years ago told me, you need to have stopped breathing X amount of times to meet the criteria and you didn't meet that criteria. So you're not, you, I can't diagnose you with sleep apnea. And I basically told them like, okay, but like, could you please anyways though? Because I don't sleep well without a machine. Like I know that I don't sleep well without a machine because I already had had a machine at that point. And um, yeah, it, it did wonders for my quality of sleep at the time. So he was like, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I did see that your sleep improved with the machine. It's just that, you don't meet the numerical qualifications for the diagnosis. So yeah, based on this, literally zero of the times, of the 230 times that I woke up were respiratory related. So based on the number, I should not qualify for the diagnosis, but based on the evidence that they have that shows that these episodes were eased or eliminated by the the increased pressure of the of the air then based on that they're saying okay but it's still obviously beneficial for her to have this respiratory treatment so here's the diagnosis stamped and they're getting me a machine so all's well that ends well i guess i'm impressed at how quickly i got the results and i'm extra impressed at just how like screwed my sleep is because obviously I've known for a while that my sleep is crap and I've also known for a while that for the amount of sleep I'm getting, cause like I go to bed at 12, one o'clock sometimes, but I don't wake up until 8.30. So it's like 
seven and a half, eight and a half hours of sleep, that sounds like a good night of sleep for any adult. But if in that time I'm waking up 200 plus times, and for every, that's what freaked me out. For every 12 minutes I was asleep, I was awake 30. Like that doesn't even mathematically make sense, but I guess they average out like how many times I woke up. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just regurgitating to you guys what was on the form. Um, but that's, that's astounding to me, just how little quality sleep I'm getting, like just how few minutes of quality sleep I'm getting every night. So yeah, I don't know how long it's gonna take me to get this new machine now with these new settings, but hopefully that ends up helping because this sucks and now it's quantified. Now we know just exactly how much it sucks. The pot has arrived for the tomato. Oh, excuse me, cat. I shouldn't have started talking, I woke her up. Um, and the kiddo wanted to come outside, so I thought, perfect, let's repot the tomato. But it's just so nice right now that I don't feel like doing any work. <laughs> But yeah, let's do it. Let's, uh, gotta get the pot, gotta get the soil. Gotta figure out how I'm gonna get the plant out of the arrow garden because it's so big that I'm afraid to hurt it or the garden itself while I'm getting it going. So let's see how I make this happen. Well, it ended up being a two-person job and I don't have very high hopes because at least one of the main stems snapped while all this was going on. But officially, the tomato is repotted. This is just one of the tomato plants. This is like the very, very big one that was crowding everybody out in the arrow garden. The little buds right there. They discovered so many more flowers today. But um, yeah, let's see how she does out here. I'm gonna water her profusely now. And I read when I was transplanting the basil, I don't even remember when that happened at this point, but here's the basil for reference. I'd read that since they'd always been hydroponic, since they'd always grown in water from seeds, that in order to get them used to soil, for the first couple of weeks, you had to like water the soil profusely. And then bit by bit after that, taper the water level off to whatever is normal for that kind of plant in soil typically. Um, and that way they get used to being in the soil without it being too much of a shock. So I'm gonna put some plant food in the same type of water that I've been using in the arrow garden. And I'm gonna use that to water the tomato for now. And I guess keep your fingers crossed for us because these next couple of weeks at least are going to be very touch and go i guess well there's more flowers which is nice but the tomato is definitely not happy very droopy very sad the strong sun hasn't come out yet today so hopefully once it does and hits her over here she'll feel better but this is really sad good saturday morning friends um, I slept really well last night actually. I slept for a long time too, so I guess I just needed it. I was exhausted um, after the sleep study the night before and waking up so early and waking up so much throughout the night and so on. So um, I actually used the mask that they used on me during the sleep study because thanks to COVID, they can't reuse anything. So they were like, here, this is yours now. And I was like, right on these things are usually like 40 bucks so um yeah so i just installed it on the machine i already have and it did take a little bit of you know getting used to it but once i fell asleep i do feel like i stayed asleep for longer than i usually do with my other older ill-fitting mask so so we spent a lot of time 
playing outside this morning. It's super hot now because it's just past noon. So I finally convinced my son to come inside and um, gave you guys a tiny update on the tomato. She's not doing great, but the full sun hasn't reached where she's at yet. I actually had her in the shade inside of the terrace. Trying to prop you guys up so I don't have to keep holding the camera. Um, but then I read that tomatoes prefer full sun and that makes a lot of sense because that tomato plant is absolutely thriving while monopolizing all of the light from the arrow garden. So I moved her to outside where the sun gets really, really intense, but that happens later in the afternoon. So I'm hoping that once the sun hits her for real, for real, maybe she'll perk up, but she is looking kind of sad. And Saturdays have become my like plant maintenance days. So like whoever needs watering gets water today. Um, whoever likes to bask in the sun sometimes, but not all the time, I'll put them outside for a little while today and so on. So I'll give you guys an update on the Dracaena as well, since I haven't shown her to you guys since the repot. And um, yeah, let's see, let's see what else we get into today. <laughs> Happy Saturday. So the tomato is not any happier now that the sun is out. Um, well, you guys can barely see her, but she's over there. She's still very droopy and very sad. I gave her a misting to see if maybe her leafies were thirsty, but I'm basically waiting on advice from like my online plant people now <laughs> to see if there's anything else I could do to keep her happy. Speaking of happy, here's my snake plant, AKA the self-sufficient plant. Absolutely thriving, looking beautiful sturdy happy healthy all this new growth oh we have a new little pup down here oh i'm not even showing you guys down here a new little pup um doo -doo -doo. oh and another new little pup isn't that adorable that's actually what they're called isn't that amazing but yeah look at this guy this is the one i showed you guys last week for reference it was down here last week so it's got to have about a whole like inch of growth now since well last week <laughs> but yeah i've got him out here getting some sun now and the long-awaited Dracaena, 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 I think, um, update. So consensus around the house is that she definitely looks much sturdier, prouder even, like she's standing up more and she's holding her shape very nicely. The leaves feel nice and firm and sturdy, but there's also a lot more brown. And I mentioned that the brown is typically indicative of overwatering. But now I don't know, like, should I cut off the brown? Because my mom was just telling me maybe the plant is so focused on, like, repairing the brown bit that it's going to start affecting the overall growth of the plant. She might have a point. But as far as knowing for sure whether I'm overwatering her or not, which I haven't watered her all week, and that's supposed to be fine, I actually ordered a moisture meter because this is what I do when I can't sleep at 1 a.m. is I look on TikTok and YouTube for plant videos and try to figure out what I'm doing wrong in my life. And somebody suggested a moisture meter would solve like three-fourths of my problems. So that's arriving tomorrow and then I'll know for sure if I'm overwatering her or not and to what degree. But if you're a planty person, help. <laughs> Do I leave this be or do I get rid of it? I worry that I'm gonna damage the plant more by removing the leaf. But yeah, I don't I don't see this recovering from this. So maybe it is best to just lob it off and give the rest of the plant a better chance. A very empty and naked arrow garden, but now look at how the jalapenos are thriving and taking over. And we still have some tomatoes here. So I might need to replant the pepper soon, but I'm kind of traumatized after what's happened to the tomato. Hey friends, so it's Saturday night and usually I wrap up these videos on Sundays, but I know that between the sleep study and then explaining the sleep study and then the tomato plant drama and whatever else, I know for certain that this video is going to be long. And I also feel like if I continue it on into tomorrow as planned, it's going to become unbearably long. So instead, I'm gonna wrap this episode up here. It'll still go up on Tuesday as usual, which you know that by now because you're watching it on Tuesday. But then Friday's episode is gonna be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So 
yeah, that's what's going on. Obviously, I want my videos to be thorough, but I also want them to be fun to watch, considering that it's just like my mundane life around the house for the most part. So um, yeah, I already have that fighting against me without also putting out a 40 minute long video. My sis-in-law, my brother's girlfriend, came by earlier and dropped off a big box of plants for me and I'm really really excited about them um hopefully <laughs> I treat them well because she's been really excited to make me this gift for a long time and um I just hope I'm able to do them justice she's a hardcore plant mom and I know that she picked these plants out specifically for me because she thinks I'll do well with them so I really don't want to let her down but I will show you guys those tomorrow for me, next episode for you guys, because um, I want to actually show them to you like in good lighting. So I want to take them outside and we'll go through the whole box together. And again, that was probably going to take a while, so I didn't want to lump that into this already very long episode as well. Speaking of, I know I'm already <laughs> rambling on and I don't want to make this outro too verbose. So just want to basically know what did you guys do this weekend? And um, is there anything exciting happening to you in the coming week? This coming weekend, as you guys are watching this video, is Easter. Um, we are doing another long distance or socially distanced Easter this year, just like last year, where if nothing else, I guess we'll be Zooming family. So we're not planning to meet up in person with anybody this year, but I know depending on where you are in the country, maybe that's different for you. So I'd love to know what you're doing this coming weekend and how it's different from last year maybe. So let me know in the comments. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.